Hi everyone, this is Liz with 143 Handmade and we're just going to do a, a real quick once over before I get stitching. But I am hand stitching a quilt. Now this is something I never thought I would do. Ever. And so this is like half of the quilt is exposed. And then the other half I have covered in this blanket. Because this is just in my bedroom where my cats are. And they are all over this thing, let me tell you. It's like I created a hammock just for them. But this is a blanket for my son, and the cats are going to be all over it anyway, so it's all good. But, okay, I'm going to try and mount the camera. I may have to cut here. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pause it, and we'll be right back. Okay. So, this quilt, it's... Um... It was part of my grieving process. Let's, let's be, you know, I'm going to be totally honest here. And it's not a super great quilt. It's not pieced all fancy or anything like that. But these squares here, um, this was the last project my mother was working on um, before she passed away. And I, she was very confused there at the end. And so I really don't know what her intention was for it. And it, it was very confusing. But I took all these squares and I... And, so, and the, her scrap fabric and cobbled together this quilt for my son. Now, she passed away almost seven years ago. Um, it took me a while to get going on it and, you know, whatnot. But I'm, you know, ready for it to be finished. So, uh, my son is helping with some of the embroidery on it, which I think is just awesome. So, it's a little wobbly, the stand that the quilt is on. It, it moves around quite a bit. This this um, stand was my grandmother's, my mother's mother, and um, but she never opened it. I opened it and, and started using it. But um, so I'm not an expert at this, but I've watched a few YouTube videos and I thought I'd give it a shot, to share my progress with you. So I've tied a very small knot in the end of my embroidery floss here, and I'm just gonna go in away from where I want to start. And then I'm gonna come up until the knot is, let's see, yeah, make sure that's in frame. See, the knot is right here, and so I'm just gonna gently, gently pop it through. And yes, it does leave a hole, but if you just kinda go like that, it goes away. Fabric's really cool like that. It is a mesh. And so um, I'm doing a bunch of different stitches. I'm not sticking to a single um, type of stitch. And I will do a little tour of what I've already done here in just a minute. But I'm just going to do... Oh, let me get that cat hair off of there. Like I said, my cats are all over this, you know, and, and that's fine for, for our purposes. But I was thinking I would just do kind of a, you know, a cantha stitch type thing. Just a straight... Up and down, up and down on this particular block. This, um, there is, it's three layers here. Um, there's a backing fabric that's, um, again, cobbled together of my mother's scrap fabrics. And um, batting in between. And then the, t the, you know, the top that we're looking at. So... But I have my, my right hand, which is my dominant hand, um, underneath to guide the needle where I can't see it. And I use my left hand on top where I can see it. So that way my eyes can help guide my um, less skilled hand, I should say. Okay, and I'm, um, I'm going to, let's see, how do I want to turn the corner? Because I could just go in between the layers, you know, and come up, or I could go all the way down again. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Let's just go all the way down. And then I'm going to stagger the stitches. See, instead of trying to line it up, I'm going to stagger them. Just because I don't know what the rules are on this or whatever, but, you know, I don't know if this is a particular kind of stitch or anything like that. It's just kind of wonky. I'm just trying to get it done. Um, my husband, my, my husband, um, was very tolerant of the idea of putting this at the end of our bed. Um, 
we have we usually have a table at the foot of our bed where we um, eat snacks and you know watch TV and stuff when it's just us um, and so when I suggested doing this he he hesitated for just a second and then he was like yeah that's what TV chairs are for and here we are so and this is a big quilt frame that's actually wider than my bed is and I have a king size bed so it's it's a big big deal it's taking up quite a bit of space in our room and I have learned in just doing the small section that I have done that this is not something that I am going to be doing a lot of um, it is it's fun in its own way it just it's so big and bulky and with all the cats it's just not um, I don't really have the space to do it you know um, once I have my my art shop, art workshop, she said, you know, something of that nature, studio, you know, something like that built, you know, then who knows what I'm going to create then. I know that resins will be the first thing that I dove into and play with once, once I have a cat free zone. That is definitely on the list. Top priority because my son is super interested in that too. So but who knows you know I've, I've learned not to say never I've learned not to not say oh well you know I'm never gonna do that craft again or you know anything like that because um, you just don't know you don't know where life will take you and you know maybe you know at some point in the future I might decide I do want to go ahead and do another one let's see I've got a thick spot so the needles not wanting to come up through there real easy um, and, um, you know, you just never know what, what, what the future holds. So, um, you know, but for now I'm just doing this one where we're trying to just, um, you know, move through the grieving process. It, it helped me quite a bit. I, there was a lot of tears shed as I, as I quilted this together, but you know, it, or, well, I didn't, I'm doing the quilting now. Oh, sorry. Um, you know, I'm doing the quilting now, but the, as I, I sewed the, the piecing, as I did the piece work, um, you know, and so, but, you know, you just find a way to, find a way to grieve and honor that person in your life. If you have a, a sewer in your family or a crafter in your family, when they pass away, they're going to leave a lot of unfinished projects. That's, that's how we crafters are. And, you know, and it just really depends. There's no right or wrong way to, to handle that because you have to know the artist because some artists, you know, would want their unfinished works destroyed and, you know, nobody to touch them or even really see them any more than absolutely necessary. You know, and then there's other artists like my mom who she, she really, she would have wanted this to be finished she she would be ecstatic at the idea of of it being um a quilt because that i do know that she was she it was planned to be a blanket i don't really know like i don't know what the pattern was that she was going for but i do know that this was supposed to be a quilt so she would be ecstatic that it, it is a quilt and not only is it a quilt but it's a quilt that um my son and i are hand quilting together um, he's not here with me at the moment, but you know, with the quilt this size, um, it's, I don't remember the dimensions, but it's, it's rather large, um, not quite big enough for a king bed, but definitely it's full size, queen size, something of that nature. Um, and it is a square roughly. And so, but she, she would be very honored by that. Um, love the fact that Ben is, is helping to quilt his own quilt. So, uh, Ben is my youngest son. He's about to turn 21. I know a lot of people, you know, it might be confusing because I say my youngest son, like it kind of makes him sound young, but no, he's about to turn 21. And, but he's an avid creator of all kinds of things in all kinds of different mediums and, you know, this is just another artistic outlet and, and he feels the same way that I do and that, you know, this is a good way to, to honor his Grammy, but 
not really something, you know, he's not like planning to have quilting be, hand quilting be a big part of his world either. So we're working through this and um, just thought I would share it with you guys to show you that, you know, even somebody who has no idea what they're doing can in fact do this. You know, I have, I've stitched off and on my whole life. My, my grandma, um, my mother's mother taught me to, um, uh, cross stitch. Well, between her and my mom, the, the two of them, you know, they work together on that one. Um, they taught me to cross stitch and do a little bit of embroidery. Um, not a huge amount, but some. And, um... I never really, as a kid, I didn't, I really was not, in, in, you know, interested in, in embroidery work. The cross stitch, it fascinated me because it was precise and, you know, I, there was, there was a lot of control there and I didn't have a lot of control as a kid, you know, most kids don't, but so that art form, all that control really appealed to me. Now as an adult, it's less appealing. I, I do, I do still do cross stitch. Um, I always have a big project that I'm working on. I'll share that in another video, but, um, but I can go, you know, I'll, I'll go like a month or sometimes a year. Um, like we have uh, almost two year old kittens and, um, I have not worked on it in most of their lifetime because they've just been too rambunctious um, to, to get it out. And so I'm using this to teach my cats how to be around embroidery work, um, needlework. Um, so I'm actually surprised that none of the cats have made an appearance yet. Usually when I start working on this, somebody appears, but, um, but yeah, so, you know, I, like I said, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just going to do a basic stitching on here and thought I would share some of it with you. I don't know that I'll, I'll show every block or anything like that. Obviously I can't because I've already, you know, done quite a bit, but okay. I'm going to have to pause the video just for a second and let my puppy in. Okay, puppy has been rescued from the outside. <laughs> no, she's fine. I just, she, she sounds so mournful because she doesn't scratch on the door. Um, for those of you that don't know, I have five dogs. Well, five and a half because my daughter's, my daughter also lives here right now and she has a dog. And so he's around, but he's not my dog. <laughs> but I have five dogs and it's funny because they all ask at the door differently. Um, but my silly Tilly, which you'll see in shorts and things, um, she, she's a German Shepherd pup. She's just over a year old and she walks up to the door and she sits there in front of it and she just lets out this moanful, you know, or this moan of, of, you know, just sorrow. It seems like it's funny. Just asked to come in. Like, it's totally, she's not stressed. It kind of sounds like she is, but she's actually not. Let's see, there's, yeah, so I got a seam on the underside that I keep hitting into on the bottom half of the square. But, so I think you guys understand, you know, the point of, you know, how to do this stitch. And um, this batting that's in here, it had a four inch, um, you know, said to tie it every four inches or so. And I, these squares are less than four inches. And so I'm using that as kind of my guide or well, not squares, the rectangles, but you know, we're gonna run experiment. We're learning as we go. And I just wanted to encourage you, if you've been considering, you know, doing this, you know, give it a shot. There's, you know, buying a hoop, a hoop instead of um, this frame, because I, I never would have done this without a frame. Honestly, I don't know that, that I would recommend that. Um, I know that for me, I would not be able to do that. 
I need to have I needed to have it mounted in some way but you know I also know that some people just you know they they spray based their their pieces together and just go for it just hold it on their lap and go for it all loose and floppy and everything and you know I encourage you to try that if if you if you think that would work for you I know myself and, and my stitching and everything well enough to know that, that would not have worked for me with with all of our animals and everything that just um but uh, I decided to pull out this frame and and it's not a very expensive frame it's it's an old frame but even though she never opened it it was you know so it's brand new to me but um, I don't know it was a Sears just a basic Sears quilting frame I don't remember the branding on it though but um, other than that but I'm sure it was not very expensive um, it's not particularly well made it's super super you know you can see that as I'm as I'm doing the stitching you can see how much it's moving but um, having the quilt mounted on this frame it just it made it just one big canvas you know essentially and so it I felt like it was worth giving a try and and I am enjoying the process uh, when the cats aren't giving me grief you know as I love my cats but they do limit your crafting they, they do and you know you have to be aware of of how you know safe your whatever it is that you're doing is for them and whatnot and so Definitely working towards getting a studio that does not have my cats in it. Now, my dogs, on the other hand, my Taylor girls, we're training her so that way she can go everywhere with me. We hope to get her um, certified to um, yeah, to just go everywhere with me, wherever I might need her to go. And... Um, so she will definitely be going in the art studio, but at the same time, she's crate trained, and so it will not be hard to train her to when we when we um, when I actually get the art studio built. The plan is is to train her to spot, you know, train her to where, you know, when we go in the art studio, she's she stays on in her spot and doesn't roam around and whatnot. But it's just going to be right across the yard, and so. But um, thank you for joining me. If this is your very first time here, um, welcome. This my, again, my name's Liz. This is uh, my channel is called One Four Three Handmade. I have an Etsy shop called Created by Las, um, but I also have my One Four Three Handmade branding over there too. It's it's in the logo. Um, so that way you can find me. I'm working with Etsy right now to, um, get 143 handmade as my shop name. But, um, I am on Pinterest. I have a Facebook page. I haven't really done a lot with Facebook yet, but, you know, learning as we go. And... So, and I do all kinds of crafts. If you have, you know... If you watch me do something and you want to know if I do something similar, <laughs> something else that's not quite the same but similar, please ask. And even if I don't do it, doesn't mean that it's not something that I'd be down to try once, you know, try it and see how it feels. I love to explore different arts and crafts, you know, you never know what, um, what skills you're going to learn from that, that, that craft that you can transfer somewhere else. Um, see, all those years of doing all the, the cross-stitch has made it to where my hands are very familiar with um, how to position themselves and find themselves and whatnot on a loom. So this is growing pretty quickly for me. To where somebody who's never, you know, worked on a loom before might find this a little more challenging than I am. So, because working on a loom, it does take some getting used to, you know, using your non-dominant hand you know, more, 
and things like that. But um, yeah, see, I got a little a little wonky over here. I'm not even gonna worry about it. You know, have these stitches kind of askew, and you know, I'm not concerned. Um, my son and I talked about it, and this is far more about getting it done. Okay, I'm gonna adjust the camera slightly. Sorry, trying not to make you seasick. Um, but it's, you know, we've talked about it and how this is an experiment and, um, it doesn't have to come out perfect. We just need to get it done. So, and as you can see, I ran out of floss. Oh, that's not the right floss. This is a different color. This is the one. Let me find my end. Let's see. My... Sorry if I'm not in camera for this part. Or in frame. Just, you know, fighting a little bit of more floss out. Because I have just that little bit more to go, and I just don't have quite enough thread to do it in. So, what I've been doing to end my, my stitches, or in my thread, I mean, is, um, okay, so this is about that far away, you know, is where that next stitch is going to go under. So, just a little bit past that... I'm making a knot. Pull my thread out. Okay. And then I take my last stitch, but instead of going all the way through all layers, I'm just put placing that, that tip just under and then picking it back up so that way I don't go through the back fabric. I don't worry about whether or not I'm on which side of the batting I'm on. I don't think that really matters. I don't know. I might learn different. But then... Um, I try and get the needle in there as far as I can and then pop it through. And pull it and see that knot slid into the underside there. So there is in fact a knot. But then what I've also been doing is very carefully sticking the needle back through that same hole, but still in between the fabrics and putting as much of that other thread in there as I can. Now see, sometimes it does show a little bit, so not everybody would like that. Um, I've gotten pretty good at, because all the cross stitch work I've done, at hiding that. See, that's gonna be um, right there in a spot where I can just land another, another stitch and it will um, disguise that little, that little bit. So, yep, I'm going to start another thread to finish out this square. But yeah, so you will find all kinds of different crafts on this channel. Um, right now I'm, I'm doing a lot of sewing. I've, I'm also working to get my camera set up so I can do polymer clay. Um, well, so I can record myself doing the polymer clay. Okay, but so I have my knot done. So, let's see, I'm going to come in, let's see, where's the, where do I want to, I want to come up right there. So, again, just under the, making sure you're under the, the top layer, or in between layers, I should say. And then come through, and pop that through. <laughs> You know, some fabrics, the, the it pops through easier than others. There we go. Okay. So now I have my more thread. Let's switch back to the right hand underneath. Because it'll go faster. And actually, I'm, I think I misspoke. I said that I'd be able to um, land a stitch right there to cover up the this, this spot. I don't know, I'm not actually gonna land on it, I'm just gonna go over it. So it'll still disguise it though. See, poof. And a lot of those little, the little holes that are created by the needle during the stitching process, those will, um, you know, after you wash the fabric, that goes away. I know that from having done a little bit of embroidery work on um, clothing. 
and making mistakes and pulling it out and whatnot. So um, you do want to make sure that um, if you're going to attempt this, that you're feeling the back every so often, like a good overall feeling it to make sure that you don't have any, you know, knots or tangles or, you know, anything on that underside. And yes, I know this is some very sloppy, you know, kind of random stitching. Um, I will... Hang on just two seconds. Let me mount, finish these last two stitches. And then I will dismount the camera and or unmount or take the camera off the mount, whatever, and show some of everything else that I've done. So, here we go. I'm just going to leave the needle like that while I give you guys a quick tour. So, that's the you know, the one I just did. And then this is the next square right above it. It had this really cool um, grid on it already. So I just, you know, did cross stitches on it. And then I did that one. It's just a more open, you know, cantha type stitch, straight stitch. This one, um, this is a split stitch. And then these are just lazy, um, what are they called? Lazy daisies. Um, that I stitched in there and here's another one that has the that grid in a different color and this one it's the stitching is almost invisible but this is just a, a plain back stitch all I did was just meander it around the the flowers and it really does disappear you know and this one was a chain stitch and let's see the others are hiding under the blanket <laughs> but in the center area i used um a quilter's thread instead of the embroidery floss and i just this this already had the the little white dots on the edge as if it was stitches and so i just echoed that and then added it to a bunch of other squares and then over here on this edge, for these, what I decided to do is just do the running stitch just along this outside edge. And then for this one, I'm doing, I don't know what this stitch is called, but it's kind of like a loose, open cross stitch kind of a thing. And then I'm using the, the um, quilter's thread again and just doing a stitch in the ditch right there for the edge because this is where the edge is. So I just wanted to make sure that was held down. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and give a thumbs up and comment and, you know, all of those awesome things. Um, share this anywhere that you feel it's appropriate. Uh, thank you so much.